Hello, everybody. It's Chris, the Natural Progressive. I am here with Sammy, an author that wrote a book called Life is Good, the Ultimate oh, Cold. Sorry, I messed that up already. It's okay. Life is Cold, the Ultimate Connections and What to Do About Our Future. Uh, this is probably a really appropriate book for what's going on in our world today. And I'm really excited to have a chance to discuss this with Sammy. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, but we will do- include in the description uh, a link to his book and his profile. So please welcome Semi to our show. And thank you for coming, Semi. I really appreciate you being here to discuss this okay. really important topic. So let's start off with um, talking about your book. You say it examines the possibility of situ- civilization being sustainable. Um, is it, I mean, <laughs> let's, let's go into that. Start off with that. Okay. So first, does it need examination to tell this? You know, many people will, will say that, you know, but, uh, um, you know, from, uh, like, um, scientific point of view, I wanted to, to, um, figure out what, what, what went wrong and, and what is wrong with civilization in terms of, uh, evolution point of view um, and uh, I came to some conclusions and actually they are not very different from other uh, people's conclusions that they al- already they say that uh, civilization can't be made sustainable and it is ruining everything and we need to uh, go back to nature as much as possible and I agree with them but I don't see many people um, telling this to the public and it is not in the public discussion much. Even uh, the people who talk like that is already uh, they can be seen as like crazy people or just the backwards people. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so you know you're not alone. <laughs> uh, yes. But uh, so um, I don't, I don't understand what is wrong with saying let's be more natural. I mean, not what is more natural than saying. Let's be more natural. I know, but you, then you can't have malls and movie theaters. And... Uh, yeah, so you can't have the hierarchical power system. You can't keep. You can't have that and live naturally. So it's yeah, like you can't have billionaires. You can't yeah, have yeah, millionaires. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. you can't have capitalist period in in uh-huh. that kind of situation. Or or any other kind of system that is based on. Yeah, I, I will mention all those things. The main aspects why this is. Uh, like that, you know, this, what is wrong with the system, what is uh, at the core, um, the fundamentals, what is wrong. And it can be with any system and we shouldn't fall into those. If we will in the future um, establish a system, we shouldn't fall into these uh, mistakes. Right. And you're talking about that evolution takes risks by trying novel things. And sometimes uh-huh. they work, sometimes they don't. And when they don't work, uh-huh. well, that's actually what evolution is. Um, uh-huh. When Most nature the has, yeah, when there's a mutation, sometimes it works for the organism, sometimes it works against the, the organism. Uh-huh. And that's evolution because uh-huh. the ones it works for will survive. The ones it works against, they will die. So yeah. that's natural uh, selection, actually, right? Uh-huh. They will say that uh, it is not actually just for the organism, but um, even uh, Derek, Jan- Derek, Derek Jansen, Jansen, Derek yes. Jansen, you know, famous uh, eco-philosopher. So he already says, uh, as many you know, people maybe already know, that uh, organisms improve their environment. So yes, like beavers. Organism do. doesn't win just by insel- itself, but if it improves its environment, then it is it wins. So the you know right cooperation is exactly cooperation so works much better than competition perfect. in nature. Well, they say it is evolution is first. It seems like competition, but when it reaches to a balance, it becomes a corporate um, cooperation. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like uh, there yeah. are I've interviewed there. Derek four times, I think, so far, and I have another scheduled interview with him on the 27th, I, I saw. <laughs> so I'm super excited to have him on the 27th, and there's, it's going to be a Q&A, so uh-huh. please submit questions for Derek Jensen on yeah. the 27th, it will be just all questions from from you guys to the audience. And I, have, I can have only one criticism of him, 
he knows already, you know, about veganism. But I understand his point of view that he says this is just a small part and we need to go back to nature and, you know, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, we, we should do whatever we can do right now. Also. Yeah, you should. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not against veganism. I'm actually for people who are, are willing to do that, but you can't mm -hmm. force animals to be vegans. It just doesn't work. <laughs> um, animals? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right right um yeah. there's that okay so let's move. relative rate of change is very important do you want to expand on that okay so uh evolution as we said it is risk taking and risk is like you organisms take change and take a risk you know um and they can change hugely or they can change little bit relative to their environment and um, the relative to change uh, rate of so relative means here when i said relative rate of change is very important here relative means uh, the change rate of so this is relative to the change rate of the rest of the system so it is a re relative uh, change rate and if some uh, organisms change faster than the general environment, you know, the rest of the environment. So I call it trauma and the trauma can be defined as a disconnection from one's nature. So it can be the rate of change goes faster than the natural rates, evolution rates, because until now all the change was in our DNA, you know, mutations and uh, it, there is a uh, rate range uh, change of range range the uh, change rate has a ra range change rate has a range okay it's like mm -hmm. um and if you go beyond this change rate faster if you change faster then you take a big risk so and your failure uh becomes like almost inevitable when you take a huge risk and so uh, no that makes a lot of sense especially where humans because of their um intelligence uh, they they're changing the environment super fast so the other species can't adapt to the changes exactly. yes. if, so if they need, yeah Go if ahead. The organisms could change faster so the the change changes actually the civilization is not the problem the problem is that it is going too fast, like it, it is changing faster than the environment. So the change rate is crucial here and it, it doesn't leave opportunity to other uh, organisms to evolve around it. You know, if, if the civilization went slower and maybe it evolved over millions of years instead of 200, 300 years or uh, it, if, we, if, we, if we can go 10,000 years, but um, if it went over millions of years, at the rate of the natural change, like biological uh, evolution, then it won't be a problem for other organisms. They will evolve around us, they will eat our garbage, our emissions it wouldn't be a problem for them, but we are going too fast, so yeah. Okay, so global changes in a relatively short time, you're kind of talking about that uh -huh. uh, period, are extremely risky for the whole system. Um, mm -hmm. Humans are tr trying to take over the operating system, operating systems of nature, nature. and they Everywhere. can't. I mean, yeah. because humans haven't had that time to adjust. They don't understand the whole the whole thing, uh -huh. in my view. But you, they don't you go ahead and <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. they don't. Yeah. yeah. So how can they recreate it if they don't understand? I mean, every little microorganism affects <laughs> every other organism. How can they possibly fathom every tiny little bit of thing that nature worked out over millions and millions of years? I've always wondered how humans are so um, <laughs> brazen or um, self-important that they think that they can do that. I mean, yes, it, makes it is a kind of ignorance. You know, there is a curve mm -hmm. that how it was like um, if somebody doesn't know anything about on, on a subject, they think they know a lot, then they start to learn, and then they realize that they don't know much, and then 
after yeah, a while, they, they intelligent know people. Uh, people who are character. unintelligent and don't look into it think they know everything about it. Uh, so um, uh, I, like our president, who thinks he's so smart and knows everything, so he won't <laughs> take the time to learn anything. <laughs> smart people will be like, "Oh crap! I thought I knew about this topic, um, but I might be wrong." Yeah. And and so I yeah. need to learn more, and and they'll always try to learn more because they they think they're lacking in information and are right on that topic. Yeah. But yeah, then there's people like Donald Trump who thinks he knows everything, so isn't going to bother to learn anything. So yeah. or he doesn't care, maybe, or or he doesn't Probably. care. <laughs> this is self-important. I don't know. Where are we? Yeah. Hum- humanity should realize that we are a very risky experiment that shows signs of failure. Go, do you want to elaborate on that? So, uh, that, as, as we said, that um, humanity shouldn't be, stay ignorant like Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. He should be more clever. Um, and I hope that Donald Trump is not... More wise. We're already clever. How about more wise? Wise, oh. yes. Uh-huh. yes. Wiser. Um, more aware of the surroundings. Not just local thinking. We were talking with Oz that he... He said that um, education doesn't make you wise because you learn a specific subject and you just ignore all the, you become a local thinker. And that's yeah, what yeah, you're not thinking about the other external factors, exactly. you're just tunnel and, vision. Uh, right. And this is bringing our doom, actually, you know, the humanity is going um, in this uh, direction because we have, we have created with our education system many local thinkers and not many like. Uh, Global, like, global yeah, global thinkers, thinkers yeah. even though there are global thinkers that are very destructive. Time. That's a totally different story. But <laughs> I'm thinking of globalization instead of localization as far as your environment and nature and all that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, in that way, global global thinking is good. Act, mm-hmm. act locally, think globally is the exactly. way I like to put it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's go into you have goals, solutions, problem. Um, Go uh, into that. Uh, yeah, be- before mentioning that, we, we skipped one. That, oh, did uh, we? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Like, I find it's very, very uh, crucial to mention that um, work in nature is simply life, not a burden. So many people feel that, you know, their work is like they need to get paid to do a to do a job and thing, and monetary system is established for that. And many hierarchical system is to push people to to, um, to things that they don't want to do because right. to, to, establish. So to improve really the important. bottom line of a big corporation and also destroy the planet in the process. Right? Uh, why, why doing so? But the, the thing is that um, humans call work work because they don't call it like hobby or life. Um, because there is a reason that we deviated from our nature and now we are doing things that we don't actually want to do and that's why we call it work like it's a burden you know but right. if you look at natural life it's not burden it's just their it's, life you know they yeah, just, just living nature, just living eat. yeah just living it but we are not just living it we just it became a burden so it's like civilization i love that that's that's a yeah. fantastic thing. and that's the way i feel too it's like yeah, you spend all this time all working and and you just work to 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 live and you should be yeah, just education living education system doesn't tell you why you are getting these um, you know education the lessons and everything you just don't know where where it will end up and at the end they they just put in your head that this is your thing that you yeah. can do yeah. you can do that it's too. programming yeah. our educational system is programming, programming. Yeah, so. You to uh-huh. go along with the system to benefit the exactly. elites, and that's mm-hmm. basically all it is. It's, that's that's our education system. We should be learning old world skills, which I'm yeah. going to be teaching some and hopefully crowdsourcing some. But I don't want to deviate from our conversation. <laughs> so go okay. on to the the goal, we, we solution, can... problems. Okay. So the problem is, uh, as I mentioned, global and rapid mutation of serious humans. Humans have uh, not evolved to live in this new paradigm, not fit for it. So we are not selected to to run this system. You know, it's just uh, risk taking. Evolution is taking risk with us. So this is the pro- problem. And the goal is to prevent mass extinction because it is very risky. It is high likely that it will cause mass extinctions. 
So the solution is obvious. Uh, people should question everything by using science and indigenous knowledge um, as much as possible to learn about nature, the natural state, and uh, give give the operating duty back to the nature and go back to nature as much as possible. Not fully, because there is like a paradox. If we go back fully, then how we prevent civilization happening again, the same mistake. But we should keep kind of an education system, um, minimal, you know, you can propose different solutions for that, but uh, it should be minim minimal. So yeah, just like minimalism. Sur sur survivalist um, education about nature uh -huh. and and how to yeah. not be like survive but not infringe on the environment, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, Min minimalist lifestyle. Kind yes, of minimal. yes. In including in the education, you can have the most important things first, like. The, uh, that I, I will mention some of them, for example, here, that uh, we can go to the second page. And um, so what I say that uh, we can skip these parts because this can confuse some people. Um, but I will mention it. Okay, so what we need to preserve is local intelligence. And everything, all life is about intelligence. We like it or not, but this is the uh, intelligence is the thing that goes against chaos. Uh, like the universe is a huge chaotic thing and it is getting more chaotic and this life we call you know takes energy from sun or other source and it goes against this chaos so this is all the, the goal of the life the goal in the quotation marks of life is this so we need to preserve local intelligence and local intelligence the most uh, intelligent thing we know is nature right now mm. the most complex thing most intelligent is nature, even more intelligent than us. We don't like, many people don't like to think like that, but it's true. I do. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> I don't think so you'd be here if you didn't think it. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, many people say it is God, you know, that they don't realize that it's nature. There was a quote like that. that nature is know. God. Nature is God. Yes, yes. So that is the creator. Nature know, is our creator. Many people already know that there is a, something more intelligent than them. But they just don't point to nature. They point to sky or something. So a man-like person, like a human, uh, like yeah, like human. being instead of like a father figure feeling. Yeah, like yeah. And I, I don't I don't go along with that. But uh -huh. nature nature is our creator in my book. Um, not to yeah. diss anyone else, but anyone else's mm -hmm. beliefs. But that's my personal belief. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, so. There is no fundamental difference between human intelligence and evolution. And intelligence is universal. What differs is the type of data that is being analyzed or processed. And so I think this is clear. Like there is, a, if anything goes against the chaos, it is intelligent. So that's that's the yeah, definition. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I don't want to. We have this outline, so we're not going to get too lost. So just uh -huh. in a in a just really quick. Um, mm -hmm. going against like the intelligence um oh my god wait mm -hmm. i had a thought and it disappeared um oh, between human the, the fundamental difference is intelligence and evolution intelligence is universal uh, but humans are are okay their survivability they're going beyond nature's intelligence thinking they're smarter than the nature and we are doing all of these things that artificially support our um, population and and make it increase about, uh, beyond the carrying okay. capacity. In, of, in, the, in the long term, it's not intelligent. You are going to say kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. In the long term, it's not intelligent. Yeah. It is in the short term keeping yeah. people alive, great. But in the long term, it is really horrible for our, our species. Yeah, and so the, the rest of species. Yeah, because nature is more intelligent than us, any intelligence, like we, that is less intelligent, is actually like anti-intelligent because it is reducing it more. So we are, nature is going, actually we are part of the nature, I don't want to separate, we are just restating We're just denying it, we are a part of nature, we're just denying it. Yeah, and we are just, nature is just restating by creating us and which is it's a huge risk and it's fa failing. And we are, we are seeing and we are just saying, okay, just this experiment is failing and let's go back to 
the previous state as much as possible and try this for me if we try this experiment slower it would be much successful but maybe it is too late if you look at climate change or some such things but we, you know as much as possible even there is little bit chance that we can survive uh, we can survive intact with nature intact as much as possible then it, it's worth trying you know some people say that everything is ruined but if there is a little bit chance that you know scientists say okay let's 0.001 percent chance that you know there is the survival chance of nature then i think it, it's worth taking i think you know, i, I agree everything you can do I agree with you 150%. So yeah, if there's any chance that we can survive, the, it, it's a matter of convincing other people that it's worth it. Um, I guess other Some people, people just say, just it's over, leave, this leave party. It, it, uh, yeah, <laughs> it is going down anyway, it's not going good, so it will not be, you know, but you know, you should keep, um, realistic and positive and try to change because that's maybe you can change maybe there is a little bit risk but, but maybe it works you know you, you need to take a chance mm -hmm. um, so okay. next is the coronavirus yes oh yeah you have that in there oh my gosh yeah hey. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even um, notice because i i skimmed through it and how did i miss that i don't know mm -hmm. but cool yeah let's talk that that's kind of the biggest so, issue right now uh, coronavirus originated in a meat market. Usually they say like well, that. Well, they don't uh, know for sure. But... Not for sure, because there, there are the things that, you know, in, they, they say it can be created in laboratory. And our, yeah, there there, there's a lot of evidence for that and just I, accidentally released. I, I'm not saying uh, it was definitely. Like, the mo there is a conspiracy theory that seems logical to me but it is just a conspiracy theory yeah so we don't I, know we don't know for sure yeah, so yeah but we know it's zoonotic came from yeah, that was that the, in 2020 we we knew that economic crisis will hit and will be the second biggest economic crisis in the world mm -hmm. so maybe it has something to do to blame or uh, but it's just you know i mentioned that before too yeah <laughs> yeah so i don't want to fall into conspiracy theories no me neither uh, let's we, not go we, into we, that we should, yeah yeah we should talk on what we know mm -hmm. certainly so um, um not certain but just you know what what the scientist says at least a vegan so, world you're, then you're gonna go into the vegan because uh -huh. that would yeah. lower the risk so, of, of the pandemics zoonotic like, viruses and all that uh, three or four um, zoonotic uh, pandemics was due to our exploitation of animals or uh, mm -hmm. our livestock and such and um, and a pandemic might collapse civilization that that's one point that you know the the chance of a virus like now it has like two percent of mortality or around that three percent or one per, uh, one person if you count the young or something like that but it could be 30 percent 40 percent it's just up to chance you know this this death rates in uh, mortality rates are just uh, gambling you know you toss a coin and who knows what will come so if it was higher then all the economy would collapse you know no one would go to do anything uh, they will all is isolate and whatever they have uh, they will eat and they won't go out at all. So that's like um, very big risk. Like they show the climate change and nuclear um, arms as risks, but this is another risk you know, right there. And so, as we said, um, eating plant based is nine times more efficient uh, due to energy, energy calculations, you know. Yeah, I've been told that. I mean, I've talked to lots of vegans, and mm -hmm. you know, there's so much I agree uh, with that. But we got to get rid of. I don't care if it's animal agriculture or um, plant agriculture. We need to stop like the mm -hmm. the huge factory farms because both of them are highly destructive, and the factory farms yeah. for animals are but, horribly cruel and evil. And yeah. I think yeah. that needs to stop. And plus, we just need to live more locally and not have big farms exactly. anywhere yeah. so yeah. um i i would like to see animals not be killed for food even though mm -hmm. i am not a vegan i admit it 
Um, Most I, of the I, people I, want like this, but it's just their cultural conditioning, and it is very difficult to get out. It is. Know, it took me years to re realize and get out of this habit. I call it habit, which is a habit, it almost like an addiction. So you need to. Uh, if you don't know how to cook to vegan food, how do you, you yeah. know, if you, if, I but mean, that's. Luckily, yeah, I was thinking that I will miss meat or cheese or something. I don't, you know, after one month or so, I get used to it. And now I can cook all most of the things. Like I make my own sausages, Satan sausages. Um, there are many recipes, delicious recipes on YouTube. So I cook all of them and try new things. Now I cook better things, more variety, actually, mm -hmm. because I was cooking all meat and chicken wings and cheese. And I was... Uh, okay that's a totally different topic is the yeah, veganism yeah. but yeah. we we all yeah. know that it's better for the planet if you're a yeah. vegan um, as long as you're not getting your food from um monoculture farms if you're getting your food organically and locally then it's good yeah but even if you are eating animals um those animals are already fed uh, 10 times more monoculture so they're already eating the animals are eating monoculture so if you eat monoculture you still and don't eat animal products you still decrease 10 times your consumption of monoculture well if you and, use you know, local meat that's grass-fed like in pastures it's less harmful yeah but but yeah but i mentioned i think i mentioned i'm just saying there. less harmful i'm not saying not harmful but That's... it is actually for climate change is more harmful because grass-fed beef releases more methane gas. See, I so... hear that argument all the time, but when you consider how many buffalo are gone off this planet that used to be here, yeah, but um, it was uh, about hundreds, millions. millions of yeah, but buffalo. now we have one point billion, like thousand times more cows. Just no, there was more buffalo million. back in the day. There was way more buffalo, and but the, the difference was. They, they actually um, worked in harmony with the grasslands and everything. They weren't stuck well, on maybe. small little um, plots. And yeah. it, I don't know, listen to my interview with Lear Keith. She talks about it uh, but, on uh, there. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I, I I'm know. sorry, I, I can't. There was so many more buffalo than there are cows right now. It, it was about mil millions, in like 50 million. I don't know, but it wasn't billion. So we, we went. Okay, I'm talking about the U.S. I don't know about the whole world. Uh -huh. But in the U.S., the the buffalo way outnumbered what we have in cows right now. I, but they migrated, and they weren't stuck in small portions of, mm -hmm. of, of the land. Like the cows are like kept up. They're not migrating. Yeah. They're not working in in con, um, connection with the the but grass. Actually, the, the, there is a limit for grass fed. Like uh, it, you can't have in billions because uh, um, the buffalo needs to eat locally. So in winter, the grass production decreases. So it is scarce. So they can't store the. They don't have the stock stocks, and that's why the populations remain low because they can import from south southern hemisphere and when humans started livestock they started to import them from you know from sunny places you know an you, when you start uh, transporting foods around the there globe is, then you can have a high have livestock a population that's that's why that's how we could overshoot i'm not for livestock. in fact i kind of want to stop domestic animal um, keeping all together. I mean, I'm kind yeah, of a let's just if, let's just if you have, have stop pets breeding. Help. I yeah, love my yeah. pets. I love my pets, yeah. but I only take yeah. rescues. I don't. I don't go and yes, buy exactly. a pet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love my pets, and mm -hmm. the majority of my horses are rescues. But I, I love, I love, I love Thank my animals, so and mm -hmm. I don't want anything bad to happen. And to them. I keep them till they die. You know? we, we are not going to eat them. So <laughs> no, and I don't eat. And my husband keeps wanting me to get pigs or something to eat, and I'm like, no. you know, if you got those pigs, they'd be That's pet for life. You, you, you there's can't. no way you would kill an animal that lived on my property that was my friend. Not yeah, happening ever. Ever. So, yeah, we just had that conversation yesterday again. <laughs>
no, no, sorry, uh, not getting they it. Is, they, they're clever than dogs, like three years old children. Yeah, pigs like, are uh, very intelligent pig, animals. Uh, I had one live here for a while, and I told him, you know what, you couldn't even do it. You are so attached to that pig that we kept here. It wasn't our pig, it was a friend's pig. He was so attached to that pig, he'd go out and visit it every day. I'm like, there's no way. There is no way that you could do it after yeah. you, after you know, knowing people, it. Yeah, they give away and just close and somebody else chops it up. And some it's, some poor traumatized person, we leave to them, you know, just chop uh, it up and we eat. And we don't even think about so it's terrible. Uh, anyway, it's anyway, horrible. So, it's horrible. Yeah. I want to cut out all the meat in my diet. I, I, yeah. I just want Hopefully to you can reduce and... If you can cut, cut I have. I can send you recipes. recipes. I can send you some recipes. For I have. Great. I have recipes if I can just find the ingredients here locally because it's really oh. hard to find the the things that oh. the vegan. I look at vegan recipes. I'm like, yeah. where the hell do you buy that? I don't know where yeah. to buy that. <laughs> you know? I never even yeah. heard of that. <laughs> and if you're importing things. from if you're importing from other countries to be vegan, that's bad yeah. too. I don't. Yeah. But, I have a hard time. But, with uh, it. Um, like animals already import to eat. That's that's one thing. But you don't need to import because leg legumes, grains, and fruits, nuts, seeds, and usually they they just they can be found locally. And um, animals import anyway, as I mentioned. You know, it, <sighs> or yeah. Okay, let's uh, not get too sidetracked. I'm sorry to get sidetracked yeah, on the so, veganism. It's just uh, an no, important it's, topic. Uh -huh. It's very important. And, just um, to mention lastly about veganism very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, non non vegan world problems. What what are they? So pandemics, mm -hmm. antibiotic resistance because we are giving antibiotic to we are putting where animals putting intense. it into the meat and then we also get antibody antibiotics to ourselves. Yeah, uh -huh. we're yeah. gonna have, yeah resistance to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. global warming, ocean dead zones increased because agriculture needs to increase like i heard that uh, the land that we need will reduce uh, about 60 percent 50 percent if we go vegan so imagine half of the agricultural land they'll just fill up that land with houses if you reduce it from farmland they'll fill it up with houses yeah there is jevon's paradox but you know they they won't they want to use <laughs> it but if we go to the wise Human humanity that we want to go towards. The, we'll the, reduce you know? our population, correct? Uh -huh. and, yeah, yeah. Yes. Without killing anybody, you know, we have to say it too because people can misunderstand. Like anyway. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, don't go down that. Well, you'll get death threats. Uh -huh. Like, or uh -huh, yeah. people just saying, just kill yourself first. I'm like, that's not what I'm uh -huh. saying. Just stop yeah, having yeah. babies. Just, if yeah, you don't have a baby, that understand. baby will not suffer. Don't have babies. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's it. That's... So. Uh, deforestation, we, we know that 80% of Amazon rainforest deforestation is for cattle and for soy production to feed the cattle. For and palm meat, oil it, and palm oil is palm good. oil in, in Asia and in Amazon, in mm -hmm. mostly it is for cattle. And we eat that uh, cattle in Europe and, you know, we export, we import all these things and we eat without thinking. And about human diseases, heart attacks, diabetes type 2 some cancers, some autoimmune diseases, osteoporosis, obesity, obesity depression, and also uh, bad karma. It causes bad karma if you eat animals. <laughs> I agree. Not everyone <laughs> will agree with that, but I agree. I agree. Yeah, I believe you in karma. you have to create a world that is able to chop up animals. So you, you have to be heartless, you know, kind of. You have The population should be, like, blind, and that's how you do it, you know. Otherwise, if you have a compassionate co population, you can't do like that. So. If you think that's um, maybe your dead uncle that you're chopping up, maybe you might not, or might think yeah, twice maybe, about it a little. You know, that, <laughs> but when you make the connection that your pet animal, for example, if, if you can see yourself or your pet animal in a cow or in a pig or something, you can't eat them. So you, you need to watch videos and watch how they behave and some slaughterhouse videos maybe they oh, can i can't watch those see. i i already yeah, know that, what goes on there yeah. i can't watch it's horrific it's yeah. i don't want to ever have an animal go through a slaughterhouse ever mm -hmm. i just i, I just but, think that is the cruelest thing yeah. ever yeah. i just do um I agree. so uh, so vegan veganism is like minimalism and minimalism for humans means nature so if 
Um, humans live minimal, they live close to nature. And okay, we already mentioned eat whole food plants based. So proof that we are failing. So there are some proofs that you know people, you know, scientists or other technicians, local educated people, they, they try to find solutions within technological with technology by using technology. So um, environmental problems, uh, we have environmental problems and they pro propose uh, technological solutions, but as far as I can see, there are no real technological solutions to our problems. So let's let's give some examples. Bioplastics, so we, some say we will produce plastics from uh, plants or such things, and we will not use fossil fuels. Because once we abandon fossil fuels, because we say, okay, it's causing climate change, once we do that, all the other uh, byproducts need to be found, like alternatives uh, should be found for all these um, byproducts. And there are lots of byproducts, like 20% of petroleum is used to produce byproducts, and it's a huge amount because we are consuming lots of petroleum. So let's let's see bioplastic. So 300 million tons plastic each year is being produced and is increasing rapidly. This production, bioplastics would necessitate 1.7 billion tons of wood per year if we try to produce these bioplastics from wood fiber. Then we will need 1.7 billion tons to meet the global demand. And for comparison, global wood consumption for all purposes is 1.7 eight billion tons per year so um it is crazy that we will need almost uh, we will need to double our wood consumption so more deforestation and such things it's it's not it doesn't the numbers doesn't look good no, they don't match so let's see if wind and solar many people already said that i read an article and i went through the numbers and it says uh, we need to build three nuclear power plants. so okay, let's see to replace fossil fuels by 2050, uh, we need to build three nuclear power plants every two days or 1,500 wind turbines every day uh, until 2050. So 30 years each day, we need to build 1,500 wind turbines. And this will necessitate 300 square miles of area each day. And that's not I, very I, doable. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look no. good. So, and it'd be uh, horrible. How much fossil yeah. fuel to, to do that? I mean, yeah. prepare the areas, and, build the roads, transport the materials. Um, uh, and, yeah. And if we say that, um, let's say we started with renewables and like grow there exponentially with just not using fossil fuels, like theoretically, like, let's say we just grow. Like we've made one plant and with that plant we made another plant by using its energy so we doubled and you know if we went like this slowly still um i i went through some studies about uh, rare earth metals scientific studies if you know they they do modeling and they they see if if it will work or not if we have enough earth rare earth metals so uh the studies were uh, they had different results, but some studies were saying that we don't have enough rare earth metals to to produce solar panels, or even if we put the batteries, that storage that we will need because um, the, it is intermittent. You know, the the wind goes up and it drops. Very yeah, and the sun low, goes so, up and the sun goes down. Yes, yeah, so and there's winter and there's summer. Um, so, exactly. Yeah. So definitely, we will need storage systems, and for that. Uh, now the, the the battery is the most uh, you know uh, re reliable one because uh, they, they they can pump water high up but it needs a certain ge geographical landscape and many countries don't have that so so th this article was saying like when i read it 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 is uh, totally crazy to think that we can have that such so uh, storage systems and we can have that kind of renewable energy meeting the current uh, demands for the energy. So it's like- uh, That's why I said we need to think reduction of energy use, de de reduction yeah. of dependence and on it 
rather than increasing the ability for uh -huh. um, yeah. us to use energy because they just add onto the fossil fuels. Exactly. They, they don't reduce the fossil say. fuels. So, mm -hmm. sorry. So I just... The J1 paradox again, exactly. I was just mentioning that, that they say to replace it, but I think maybe there is the petroleum is already going down. Maybe I don't know what are your stocks, but uh, they say to replace it. But we know that people, you know, humanity with monetary system is based on growth, so they always use it to, to grow, you know, on top of something. They, they right. never reduce or replace something um, under this current uh, hierarchical competition based system. I agree, growth. I think that's a fact, and I don't see how anyone can argue with that because it. It's verifiable. That's a fact. So, okay. so okay. We mentioned about uh, grass-fed cattle. We can pass veganism is enough. Okay. So, are we going to page three yet, or is there something you're missing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this a coincidence that technological technological solutions do not work? I'll then I'll go right? find the <laughs> huh? the page three. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. so, is it a coincidence that they don't work? <laughs> Well, it is not because nothing is coincidence, they say, you know, it's, everything has a reason. So um, there must be a fundamental reason that we, we are trying and we are not able to find that. So um, so in the book, I mentioned about meat, you know, that humanity came up. Spinoza mentioned about free will, that we don't have free will and such things. So we are dependent on evolution, like we don't have our own minds going and doing things. We we are a product of evolution, so people should realize that. And the other thing is that, um, okay, I mentioned, so for example, monetary system is efficient. Many people say that this is the best that we can do. It is very efficient, supply and demand, but it is not. It is a very short-sighted local intelligence, anti-intelligence, I call it, <laughs> uh, not very intelligent. Uh, putting a price tag means you intend to sell, consume, and commodify, you know, to consume, so, um, to profit over something and um, I say that uh, to meet the happiness of like humans are the least efficient animal if you think about it and we if don't we give anything we just take so go yes ahead. and we need too much to be happy you know if you look at the animal like if you if you are intelligent you can do the most with the least and the goal is like be happy you know the, as i see like this because um, evolution programmed us in that direction that if you are happy uh, you are going in the right direction in the natural balance like mm -hmm. uh, if you eat uh, the evolution tells you have, have some energy and you eat and you feel good or you sleep you feel good. like you know so for me intelligence and uh, happiness and evolution in, in the natural balance, it, they're the same thing. But when you start to derive the debate from the natural balance, uh, then the happiness does not equate to intelligence or um, like, um, you, it's like it becomes an addiction. You know? yeah. we, don't, we didn't have um, alcohol, for example. Many people are addicted to alcohol because they, they you know, because um, they're not sugar. finding happiness anywhere else. They're not connected yeah. to nature. They're not. Yeah. So it is like a trauma again. Uh, they they went away from natural balance, from their natural being. They they lost connection, social connections, and they tried to connect something else. You know. And they're just depressed because life is suppressing, and yeah. you know you're working they want to, to live it. instead of live or wait. Yeah, you're working. To, you you have to work to to just sustain yourself instead of um, living and just doing what it takes to put nourishment in your body and living with nature and experiencing nature on a daily basis. I think that really, really is yeah. happiness. Doing I, that. I was. I always like. I read some uh, uh, articles how how the tribes were living like before and. Mm -hmm. How, human, how humans were living and usually like they are living with their families their friends all together and mm -hmm. they don't have cars they can't be separated like uh, they they are living locally and everybody knows each other and they have a common culture so there is minimum uh, cultural freedom. clashing yeah 
clashing. So they're all harmony. They're believing the same thing. They're living in harmony. And then, um, you know, you can connect. You don't feel excluded or anything. So you're, you're much more happier, with, even you don't have much material thing. Still, you go out and it is your hobby. You know, it's your life. As mentioned, it's not work to go to collect the food. You go walking with your friends. Mm -hmm. and then you're like find a bush with berries on it and you're all talking Uh while you're you're picking them and and you know which one to pick because you have knowledge yeah mushrooms gathering mushrooms and yeah Uh wild onions and i mean i did that as a kid and it's like that is the life that is the life i used to take my horses up in the mountains no it's not a joke i used to do this when i was a kid i'd be able to find wild animals or wild onions and berries and stuff and and i would have plenty to eat and it was just off the land it was off the land and i mean i can't find those things anymore because the everything is so picked over it's it's horrible but it used to be that way currants there's Mm -hmm. these blackberries that grew in the trees that we could wild onions every i mean mushrooms all this stuff that you could eat yeah. It was... I, I, I have a poem in, at the beginning of the book, and it was saying, we traded um, happiness with convenience, something like this. We traded um, something like that. But is it really convenient when you have to work all those hours for a corporation, no become a slave is for eight hours, when you could spend three hours a day scav- scavenging Pe- for food, maybe? People have, and... yeah, people have ready meals. They think it is a good thing, fast, but why they why, they forgot why they have ready meals because they yeah. don't have time anymore, you know. To, right? Yeah. Yes, I love that thought. Yes, I agree. Hundred, hundred and fifty. Uh, I was I was talking with my professor in, in university uh, when I was doing my PhD, and I, I was talking about uh, computers, mm-hmm. and I said to her, "Look." Uh, we found computers, they can calculate uh, for us everything much faster, billion times faster. But look, we are not uh, working less. Now we are working almost more like... A, and you're like, sitting at a desk what? while you're doing it, getting uh-huh. fat, yeah, 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 we were lazy. in front of the computer. Yeah. <laughs> and not enjoying the sunshine and outdoors and being where you're supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, we are <laughs> drifting away from... The, yeah, we uh, are. Okay. Um, Let's kind of uh, wrap it up with the rest of oh you have uh-huh. democracy so and democracy they can't be there can't be two operating systems we have monetary system and voting so democracy is voting so monetary system is accumulative and transferable like DNA so it is more powerful but voting is uh, just vote one at a time so people vote one at a time and they can't give votes to each other so everyone has like it's not reproductive it doesn't reproduce. So monetary system always wins over democracy. So as long as monetary system exists, democracy will always fail. Mon- monopoly is formed. And when monopoly is formed, intelligence decreases, diversity, diversity decreases. And uh, because in rapidly changing novel mutations, which this monetary system is causing or civilization, and all the things go with it, uh, that leads to monopolies and reduced intelligence and diversity. We can see this as, in examples. So, for example, GMOs are harmful because it increases the rate of change in mutations. So, huge jumps, interspecies, and unnatural um, evolutionary uh, progress. It's not progress. Okay, sorry. that makes so, sense. Um, most jobs are harmful in the long term. Any modern job on average in the long term creates more problems than it solves. It's a statistical fact. And any anyone who says no, it's a statistical fact. I can agree with them. Um, and any novelty should be considered with its long-term global impacts, including uh, social. So how humans will use it. And usually, according to Murphy's law, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. So there will be some humans that will use it for the bad. So it's inevitable, almost inevitable, that any technology will be used to do harm. And um, yeah, so practically all novel technologies will be abused, and so that's that's here is it. Okay. Yeah, you killed it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that is amazing. Any last sum sum up words or or 
thoughts um, that you really want people to understand, and then we'll. You know, yeah, just I want people to understand the importance of minimalism and veganism and the intelligence of nature. Like, um, I want people to see the nature as the guide, not not the scientists. Not the, I mean, of course, listen to scientists, but not don't take them like. The, just find us some solution or so. Look at, uh, just ask the scientists how nature is and then how, you know, to use science to learn about nature and go and be close to nature. Don't use science. To, nature is always my guide. I, I always think uh, about yes, nature. Yes, I always yes, consider yes. nature. Like, is this a natural thing? Should we be doing this? It, I mean, what? How, yes. how do we do things? How does nature handle this situation or that? Um, so this was perfect. I mean, in so many ways, so many yeah. ways, this interview was very, very perfect. And I really appreciate oh, you coming on, Semi. This oh, I, no, I really no, no, no. enjoyed our conversation. Well, and and your book. Um, now I really want to read it. Um, well. <laughs> the, the book again for everybody. I'm gonna try not to get. It's a long title, so forgive me for a cheat sheet. Life is cold. The ultimate connections and what to do about our future. Um, we're going to put a link in. <sighs> in the description and and send me uh, again just thank you so much for coming on and i i hope to connect with you again in the future for another interview possibly yeah, so me too thank you very thank much. You so much all right thank bye you. guys thank you and have a good night or day whatever time it is <laughs> it's night now <laughs> okay see you don't go away <laughs>